is also the president of all municipalities in the world, president of the Maspala, and president of the Maspala in South Africa. So the mayor at the moment, let's welcome Comrade Paxson. Thank you very much, Program Director. Akisimuleka Kulibisa Tompo, Kubaruti, in particular, the Zoe Bible Church for hosting us and for enabling us to celebrate Comrade Habs' life in his spiritual home. Kilibise manzo matsidi so kubane lapa. Sis Naps, the children, the extended family, but also his other family, the African National Congress, and indeed the entire liberation movement. Comrades and friends who are here to pay homage to and celebrate the life of a consummate leader of our people, an activist par excellence, a freedom lover, Comrade Khabisi Musungkut. I say consummate activist, for his life evinced that of an all-rounded freedom-loving South Africa. Indeed, as indicated, he was a trade unionist, for he used the workplace as a site of struggle, not only for the rights of workers, but for the freedom of the people of this country. This in an environment where being a union leader in a parastata on its own was a sacrifice to the very job that you had. And you were almost immediately exposed at work to repression, suppression, and indeed all kinds of humiliation. When he left the workplace, the neighborhood became an extension of the site of struggle as he organized his own community here in Pimville in Soweto under the auspices of the Soweto Civic Association. It is therefore apt that this memorial service takes place here in Pimville, Soweto. I say celebrated Soweto Civic Association, for in many ways, he and his comrades were the forefront of the demand for integrated cities under the slogan, One City, One Tax Base. No doubt in many ways, 
he himself is celebrated for his work after the democratic breakthrough of 1994. This as a member of the Provincial Executive Committee, amongst others of the African National Congress, and a representative of the people in the Provincial Legislature, and as a member of the Executive Council in the various departments that he headed. In as much as we can bear testimony to his work to help us attain our freedom, we understand all too well that the gains of freedom can also be reversed. This can be reversed through misgovernance, through lack of probity, and indeed through political actions intended to undermine the freedom that we so seek to attain. I say we seek to attain our freedom, for if you look at the back of your program and what our demands for freedom were, we can comfortably say, We are not yet there. For as long as we live in a society where your access to opportunity is determined by your race, class, and gender, then we have not attained the objectives of our freedom. For as long as we live in a society where those of the African race find themselves and in a quarter of the income of their white counterparts, then we know that we still have not achieved our freedom. So for us, 1994 was a breakthrough to enable us to have access to the levers of political power to enable us to attain our freedom. And I know many start saying, well, uh, we are free. We are free to vote, but we are not free from hunger. We are not free from poverty. We are not free from premature mortality. We are not free from the illnesses that afflict us simply because we are poor or simply because we are black. So for us to say we have achieved freedom, it is when we can calculate life expectancy of South Africans and you would not be able to say that this national group in our country is likely to live longer than this national group in our country simply because of their class status, then we are not free. We will only be free when we know that our opportunity to prosperity is equal and equitable. And that, therefore, is the task of the National Liberation Movement. Allow me, comrades, to indicate and affirm certain points that have been made that indeed the past year has enabled us to witness what the President called a new dawn. It has enabled us to have a number of epochal moments that we should celebrate in our country. For sometimes when you say it is epochal, it is when it is such a moment that takes you to the next level. And there are a number of epochal moments that took place in the latter parts of this year that I'll reflect on. So that when we look back at this year, when we say in this year where we lost amongst others Comrade Cubs, we were also turning the corner and introducing epochal moments in our society to enable us to advance the objects of the National Democratic Revolution. <clears throat> it should be that our judgment thereof is objective. Firstly, under the leadership of President Cyril Ramaphosa, the government of our country hosted an investment conference 
to attract in excess of 100 billion rand into the South African economy. Now, to attract that much investment, both from local and international investors, is a sign of confidence in the leadership of the country, in as much as it is a sign of confidence in the future of that country. I therefore wish to contend that that on its own was an epochal moment, a moment that will enable our country to leapfrog towards the next levels of development that we so aspire towards. In the Gauteng province, under the leadership of Comrade David Makura, our Premier, and Chairperson of the African National Congress in the province, the provincial government hosted the Africa Investment Forum, where African countries meeting with African businesses, attracting international investors, collectively made decisions about investing in the different parts of our, of our countries. Many of these projects were private-led projects hosted by the provincial government to enable inter-Africa trade so that we as Africans can leverage off each other and help us grow our respective economies. It is at this conference where, invest where investors from different parts of the continent and indeed throughout the world came together and literally reached deals to finance and invest in certain projects. We have South African companies that are saying we will build houses in Kenya. We have South African companies that are saying we ourselves as South African companies will build a train in Ghana. And we have many other African countries that have said we will come to Gauteng and we will invest in ensuring that the Gau train gets to Soweto. They have said that we are committed to ensure that Africa builds its first cellular phone in KwaZulu-Natal. This is the confidence of Africans in each other saying that we have identified investment opportunities throughout Africa where we will invest in each other's economies. I therefore contend that this on its own <coughs> indeed is epochal. However, being the civic being that I am, it would be remiss of me not to talk about at least Vikinyanayamaspala or Goraspala. So our local authorities in the country a few weeks ago signed an agreement with the United Nations under the leadership of the South African Local Government Association to say that we as local authorities are committing towards the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals and we see the United Nations as partners in the attainment of the global goals of fighting inequality, poverty, sexism, cities that are not integrated, environmental degradation and injustice. Our local authorities have said, we take it upon ourselves to be partners with the global community to ensure that we create a better South Africa and a better world. I say this is epochal because in fact, I can say without a shadow of doubt, having been part of the first forum that was hosted by the United Nations to enable local government to articulate its commitment to the Sustainable Development Goals, I will paraphrase the Deputy Secretary General, Ms. Amina Mohammed, when she said to all the local authorities of the world, we as the global community 
need you as our local authorities to ensure that we can achieve the vision towards 2030 as espoused in the Sustainable Development Goals. And I know but a few years ago, it would have been impossible for a United Nations leader to even say the word local authority. So for the Deputy Secretary General to say to local government, we, as the global community, need you as local authorities to ensure that we can collectively build a better world is an affirmation of the progress that we are making in terms of governance and development. And that's when I say, when Salga signed this agreement with the United Nations, on its own was a statement that says, we are now partners of the United Nations to create and build a better world for all. It is indeed another epochal moment. So if we combine these epochal moments through practice and action, we can indeed be able to say to Brahaps and to the legion of activists that he joins in the other world that our commitment is to ensure that South Africa becomes and is the shining star of freedom, equity, equality, justice. It is, in fact, a celebration of humanity and justice. Because we can only celebrate his life through our actions. He committed his life to ensure that we can attain our freedom. So we should be able to celebrate his life by attaining what is written at the back of that program. As Comrade Nchalinchali said, we cannot say the Freedom Charter was just a document. It was not only a set of demands, it was our vision of freedom. It was our articulation of what freedom means for all freedom-loving South Africans. So, to say we are free, to say that Comrade Hubs can sleep well where he is, will only happen when we put our collective energies towards the objectives of attaining this freedom. Let us celebrate him through our actions. Let us celebrate his life through our deeds. Let us celebrate his contribution through our activities and let us ensure that South Africa is the place where everybody wants to live. Thank you very much. Those are images that uh, are of the memorial service which has been led by the ANC, uh, held at the Zoe Bible Church in Pimville in Soweto, uh, saying their last farewells to Khabisi Musunkutu. Uh, many people spoke uh, throughout uh, the course of the afternoon, uh, paying their last respects and uh, uh, farewell messages in many ways. And the theme was uh, consistent throughout, uh, paying tribute to a man who contributed selflessly uh, not just to his organization, his party, uh, but to the country in general. Um, some of the people that spoke, uh, Professor Mary Metcalf, uh, who was a former MEC for Education in Gauteng and also MEC for Agriculture, Conservation, Environment and Land Affairs, uh, spoke about Mosonku to saying he was a good leader and friend and uh, she says she was privileged to have worked with him. Uh, she says that uh, uh, Habs and his generation sacrificed so much uh, without any thought of reward and dedicated his time to understand uh, people's frustration, which built trust with the people. His son-in-law then spoke and said that uh, uh, he was... Um, 
a man, a great man who loved his family, his organization, the ANC and the country. And he also pled with all organizations to honor his legacy with ethical leadership. Uh, he said that in his last minutes on earth, Musungkutu says that he was at peace. Faith Mazumboko, the ANC Women's League uh, 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 chairperson in Gauteng, said uh, that uh, he was a, f a, a gentle giant, a father who groomed many young women in the ANC, and that he dedicated uh, a lot of efforts to making sure that women's issues were always at the forefront and that representation was very important to him. Then we heard from Kosatu, Aubrey Shabalana, saying uh, that uh, this was a man who dedicated his life in service of his organization, was an embodiment of uh, the alliance. And he also added that he was an upright and incorruptible leader uh, to have emerged out of the trade union movement. Uh, speaking about trade unions, Kosatu General Secretary Bekin Chali Chali also spoke and he says that this was a man that was there throughout the formation of the UDF, the trade unions. He was there and he did it all for the love of his people. SACP, uh, also represented by Joan PC, who said that uh, this was a man who never betrayed the revolution. Uh, no matter how difficult things were, he reminded uh, the faithful of the Revolutionary Alliance. And we've just heard now from uh, Park Stow, who's uh, the current Treasurer General of the ANC. And uh, he also said that uh, this was a man who used the workplace as a, um, a site of the struggle, furthering the rights of workers and working hard for the freedom of the country and also spoke about the many contributions he made even in the economic realm and talking about intra-Africa trade and other things as well. So many people paying tribute to uh, Ntate Musunkutu who passed away uh, this week uh, in his home in Johannesburg after receiving care for a stroke that he suffered in July this year. We're going to take a break when we come back.